war crimes on industrial scale is not new to Putin. He never cared about civilian casualties when he was bombing more than 20 years ago Russian cities in Chechnya, or in 2013 bombing uh, the hospitals in Syria, the carpet bombing Aleppo and other rebel strongholds. So why, why being surprised that now when his um, uh, uh, blitzkrieg failed, uh, he's uh, returning to traditional tactics of terror um, and uh, bombing civilians using cluster bombs uh, and other weapons banned by international convention. It's, it is a war crime. And considering the size of the Russian operation in Ukraine, we have no doubt about it. You can even look back to Northern Tribunal, preparation and con conduct of, of aggressive war. And Putin had been preparing for this war in plain sight. You cannot blame him for hiding his uh, uh, efforts and preparations to, to conquer Ukraine. He never recognized Ukraine as an independent and sovereign state. And uh, in the last six months or so, he had been building up his tr troops, uh, both uh, um, on, um, on the ground and, 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 uh, and uh, in the sea. He even managed to bring Pacific fleet to the Black Sea. So we all saw it and uh, Putin believed that he could get away with his crimes as he did in the past. This is not just last two years. This man is in power for more than two decades. And staying in power for so long, having an absolute power, could have negative effect even to a person with the noblest instincts and greatest intellect. And Putin, definitely not this kind of a man. His education uh, was earned in the streets of Leningrad and in the school of KGB. And uh, uh, as every dictator, he was emboldened by impunity of his previous actions. And uh, every dictator ended up in history relying on a very small inner yeah. circle. And all we know that Putin never trusted open sources. He always relied on his advisors bringing him the information. And of course, you're right, during COVID, this inner circle probably shrank even to, to, to a smaller size. But at the end of the day, it's not just about inner circle. It's about Putin's messianic beliefs that he could change history and turn it back. He was very clear, very specific 15 years ago in Munich at the security conference in Europe when he talked about return to the, what he called spheres of influence. He wants to live in a world of 19th century where big guys, big countries could dictate smaller ones how to uh, handle their domestic and foreign affairs. And uh, over 15 years, last 15 years, he was very consistent in pushing this strategy and, and uh, uh, changing the world uh, um, into his vision. And it's, it's tragic that while his behavior was so obvious, the free world was not ready to, to respond, whether it was aggression against the Republic of Georgia in 2008, or his support for Bashar al-Assad in Syria, or annexation of Crimea, and again, continue this list. And even this aggression could have been stopped if six months ago, the free world responded decisively by helping Ukraine to build up its defense. Appeasement is probably a wrong term because it's, it has been used, and I learned it from history books, it's textbooks when I was in school, about 1930s, and about uh, uh, appeasement policies that led to the World War II. But while criticizing politicians like Chamberlain and Daladier, for appeasing Hitler, we have to admit that they were not involved in doing business with Nazis. I think what we saw in the last uh, 20 years or so, it's, uh, it's the business as usual. It was not just a, a desperate attempt to preserve peace, but it was more about preserving lucrative contracts and potentially job uh, offers after uh, um, politicians uh, uh, retired from, from their jobs, like. Gerhard Schroeder, François Fillon, it's a long list of politicians and uh, 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 captains of, of uh, business from the free world. It's a very long list of people 
who decided that they could do business with Putin and even work for, for him. Putin built, give them credit, the most effective network of lobbyists and agents ever built in, in history because he had so much cash at his disposal and he was never shy to use these billions of dollars to buy favors uh, from uh, people from every, every quarter. It's, it's, it's actually amazing because when uh, I uh, mm, uh, wrote uh, just after the beginning of, of this latest stage of Putin's aggression, uh, my wish list, uh, I didn't expect uh, this list to materialize so soon. And I'm, I'm astonished by, by the united uh, response of the, of the Western world to, uh, to Putin's aggression. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's too late because, as I said, we could have saved lives if, if even part of this, small part of this, uh, uh, has been done uh, uh, um, uh, some time ago. But uh, as of now, I think that Putin found himself in a desperate situation, and it's definitely not something he expected. I believe that he saw Ukraine campaign as a very short one, blitzkrieg, uh, taking over Kyiv, installing his puppet government there, and negotiating with the free world that would eventually accept new geopolitical reality. As of now, the Ukrainian army and Ukrainian people are fighting back. It's, it's their heroism. I think th it's the heroism of Ukrainian people actually helped to change the public opinion in, 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 in the West. I think that's what we saw in the last few days. It's a dramatic shift in public opinion. Because even, even after uh, uh, the beginning of Putin's aggression, Germany refused to arm Ukraine. And all of a sudden, Olaf Scholz, German chancellor, now changed German policy that was there for more than 50 years, so-called Ostpolitik, to 180 degrees. And now we see the unity. And surprisingly to me, uh, America, that traditionally led the way, is now leading from behind. You look at American sanctions, and they are still, you know, to catch, catch Europeans. And uh, uh, combining the um, military support, uh, humanitarian aid, uh, um, political pressure, boycott of Russian, Russian organizations, uh, Russian participation in international bodies from sport to Interpol, um, uh, cutting Russia from, from the rest of the world by blocking Russia, uh, by Aeroflot uh, and other Russian registered planes, and of course imposing really harsh sanctions, that may have an effect because the moment Putin loses his war chest, how is he going to pay for his military, for his police, for his propaganda? Russian dictatorship is not an old-fashioned ideological dictatorship based on some beliefs as Stalin's or Hitler. It's a mafia-like uh, um, structure. And nobody is going to stay loyal to a mafia boss if no protection is offered. And I think that in the next few weeks, we could see dramatic changes in Russia when Putin's power structure may crumble because he will be simply running out of cash. We can spend hours pointing out at, at politicians that, that decided not to take actions at the time where these actions uh, was crying just uh, to, 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 be, um, to materialize. Uh, Litvinenko, 16 years ago, Putin attacked Britain with a nuclear substance uh, and killed uh, uh, former Russian spy Litvinenko, who uh, uh, was, was uh, in Britain. And uh, how many consecutive British governments decided to sit on this case because they didn't know how to handle it because they all knew that Putin was behind it. And, uh, um, and of course, uh, money from Russian oligarchs uh, played such a massive role in every aspect of British life, from real estate to sport. And again, let's give Putin credit. The idea of using uh, this money, this illicit uh, um, cash, uh, uh, to uh, buy um, institutions like Chelsea and, and Arsenal uh, obviously gave him an opportunity to influence not only British elite, but also ordinary people. Uh, Putin succeeded in, in influencing every level of, of the Western world by uh, wisely putting money uh, in sport, uh, culture, politics, business. And 
again, I'm, I'm astonished that everything he did in more than 20 years has been ruined in, 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 in a week. Thanks again to the heroic resistance of Ukrainians who survived against all the odds and demonstrated that Putin's army and actually Putin's empire was a colossus on a clay feet. Look, the word optimism is probably it's, it's, uh, it's misplaced here because people are being killed as we speak. Uh, and uh, Putin shifted from uh, his original tactics of pretending that he was a liberator. And that's why in the first three days, Russian troops tried to avoid massive civil, uh, uh, civil casualties uh, to, a, to a tactic of terror, uh, attacking civilians, because he, uh, he understands that he cannot win the battle uh, uh, for Kiev uh, without uh, massive strikes. But I, as for the outcome of the war, I remain very optimistic. Ukrainian army is not outnumbered, it's outgunned, but they, they have, uh, the numbers are there. It's, it's a big country with 44 million people and with hundreds of thousands of seasoned soldiers. So all they need is just to survive a few more days. Russian army is running out of steam, logistical problems. They, they, they are just uh, they're massive. Uh, they, they have to supply the army that is spread across enemy's territory. And we see more and more evidence that Ukrainian people, ordinary people, they are willing to fight or to sabotage all these efforts. So um, I think that's the, um, uh, the outcome of the war is, is clear. The question is what price Ukrainians will pay for, for defeating Putin's armies. And if this price could be, could be massive. But uh, with, with all the, all the um, equipment that being, shipped, that being shipped to Ukraine, I think they will, they will build an army that will um, ruin uh, um, Putin's, Putin's armada there. But again, there could be still setbacks because as you said, the, the, the uh, Russia, Russian troops are desperately trying to take over Kyiv. And I, 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 I'm praying for those civilians uh, and who are staying there in, in besieged city. Um, and again, I hope that in the next few days they will hold their ground because if Putin doesn't finish this war soon enough, his army will disintegrate. Thank <laughs> you.